here we are welcome to a new section this section is about prioritizing work and managing queues the syllabus and the assessment criteria here are know how to coordinate prioritize and structure work and activities to create deliver and support services and there are two aspects here where you will be tested for the application of the concepts bl3 that is managing queues and backlogs and secondly prioritization of work so there's a close connection anyway between the managing of queues and backlogs as well as prioritization of work in any um, operation or any service or any project it is important to manage the flow of work generally if you uh, reflect on it queue happens when the demand is more than supply for example if you have to go to a railway station and buy a ticket if you are the first person always if there are several counters there and for every new person coming into the station if they open a new counter there will be no queue at all but it would be impossible to open a new counter for purchasing tickets for every new person coming in that's why queues build up and therefore the challenge there is the the resource uh, shortage if there are infinite resources there would be no queue to process uh, someone's request or a user's request with that background let's look at this concept in more detail lean devops and other modern approaches emphasizes the importance of the managing the queues managing the flow of work to smoothen the flow of work to automate the flow of work by which uh, there are no obstacles in between which can be created manually secondly work waiting in queues is an interruption to flow so when a user calls and asks for something and they are waiting for it it's an interruption thirdly dynamic reallocation of resources can help to mitigate queue effects for example if there is a group of five people and they are working on different kinds of requests there should be dynamic allocation for example if i am one of the five people and i am sitting free then i should take the next incoming work provided i have the skills to process it continuing on managing queues and backlogs every system needs some slack to deal with variation in work arrival time slack means some rest time if the team is always occupied or over occupied over burdened that's when the managing the queues become even more difficult on the hand, other hand if they have some free time they may be able to do some of their own inside processing internal processing before they can take some other work coming in and work on it more efficiently however the problem remains the slack is very little because they cannot add resources to create that slack particularly adding people resources is not possible all the time it can be done sometimes though we will look at this how we can dynamically change the resources particularly the people when it comes to incident handling when we use the concept of swarming and because the peak loads happen only once in a while so can we add more people resources when the loads are increasing which may not be possible always but in some cases we may have to do it just look at also in a railway station let's say the crowd is too high they may open an additional counter just for maybe the next one hour though that counter may be closed um, most of the time and same happens in airports when you check in if the queue is very long too many people in that going to check in they may open an additional counter for baggage processing for example methods of minimizing queues there are some very interesting ways of uh, reducing the queues one way is to reduce the variation in demand with pricing mechanism the moment we tell somebody that if you do it in the morning hours we will give you a discount then because in the morning hours let's say nobody is coming in but they're coming in a little late then they may opt for going in those morning early morning hours let's say 5 a.m or 6 a.m or if you tell them that the for the first time item there will be discount then that can uh, uh, create a variation in the demand so there are a lot of interesting and creative ways for um, changing the way the demand comes in another way is to reduce the variation in demand by making a different policy for example if you tell employees that 
the employees can change their benefits packages for example how much benefits they can claim in a month from their salary towards maybe uh, house rent or maybe other perks and if you tell them that you cannot change that configuration of your salary you can do only three times per quarter then it may create a variation in the demand otherwise you may be allowing employees to change their uh, package every week the overall salary remains the same of course but the way they put different components into their salary they may have only three times um, allowance to do that in one quarter otherwise you know all employees may be trying to do it on a daily basis and therefore the uh, the hr may have to process the request a large volume of requests on every daily basis on a daily basis Another interesting way is to increase the ability to accept demand. Using automation, demands can be fulfilled in a faster way. For example, if a team of five people cannot handle 50 requests in one hour, why not automate it? Maybe then more than even more than 50 requests can be accommodated within that one hour. Increase the headcount, of course, is a good solution, though it may not be really possible to accept an increasing demand. Outsourcing, if it cannot be done internally, if there is a out if there's a supplier who can do it more effectively with automation or better skills then why not outsource it cost of uh, changing capacity can be decreased for example cloud servers they usually they provide that um, the costs are very low in cloud systems uh, when we uh, if an organization migrates to cloud access then uh, uh, they may increase their machine requirements um, Periodically, they may want to have more uh, system resources. Sometimes they may want less system resources. That's known as elasticity of the cloud. And they will make the payment based on the usage of the cloud. So, and because the cloud will have the shared resource pools, uh, if they have, a, let's say a cloud vendor has 10,000 systems which they are offering to all their customers in the market. And uh, if a system is underused, that system can be used by another user or another customer. But for the user, for a single user, they are more concerned with whether systems are available to them or not based on their fluctuating demand another way to is to deflect the demand from the value stream for example by using automation like a ci cd devops or um, using shift left the demand can be deflected coming back to shift left which we discussed earlier in shift left essentially uh, things like design building testing operations and support are pushed to previous stages of the life cycle which means we are moving things towards the customer side however so if, for example asking a user to download a fix on their own or the, or uh, use self help portal is a good example of shift left so by doing that we are reducing the workload on the service desk staff because the users are themselves resolving their own queries or issues so that's known as deflecting of demand from the value stream however this one is more challenging because it may require better self-service uh, uh, systems better knowledge management and automation also it requires changes to people's behavior user behavior needs to change processes have to be improved practices may have, may have to be modified technology may have to be put in place in if you look at devops uh, where deployment and release are actually pushed towards development or the provisioning of systems and components is done automatically so uh, a technical engineer may be able to write a script on how to deploy a certain code package on thousands of systems using uh, those scripts and that's why devops has become so popular because the code build is automatic the code testing is automatic the code packaging is automatic and uh, if you want to deploy also automatically, then we move from uh, continuous integration and delivery to continuous deployment, which is automatic deployment of packages. So all these are example of shifting left. Testing, another last example of shifting left is to do the testing during the design itself. So first do the test and afterwards do the development of the code, which is also known as test-driven development. Yeah. Even I, I just realized this morning when I was trying to reset my password, when I'm resetting the password myself uh, for certain login, it's actually been shifted left because I don't have to call anybody to reset my password. They're making me reset my password myself. 
Okay, so that's a shift left example. 